Shalom everybody, this is Rabbi Shapira. Throughout this year, we are going through in the book of Shmot, the commentary of Rabbi Moshe al -Sheikh. Rabbi Moshe al -Sheikh, as I explained to you in the very last episode, is uh, one of the giants of the faith. And today, Rega Be'ivrit will be a very special Rega Be'ivrit. This Rega Be'ivrit will be, look where I'm standing and the entrance of Bet Akneset of Rabbi Moshe al Sheikh. We are actually here, standing inside the synagogue. Now, before I get to the Rega Be'ivrit today, I would like to tell you a little bit about Rabbi Sheikh. A 16th century synagogue named after Rabbi Moshe al Sheikh, a Sephardic scholar and preacher who came to known as the Holy al Sheikh. The synagogue is built in the characteristic of the 16th century Sephardic style. The lack of women's section indicates that it was first built as a house of learning, meaning Bet Midrash, and they only later transformed into a synagogue. The prayer hall is unique in a row pointed to arches which support the, the barrel vault that protrude the domes of the roof of the building. A Hebrew inscription of the building facade is attests to the renovation of the synagogue underwent, according to local tradition, before the great earthquake that took place here in Tzfat in 1837, those saving it from destruction. Amazing. The inscription mentioned a few names. Yaakov, Yaakov, Faji, the builder, Yecheskel Reuven Menashe, the philanthropist, and Rabbi Yaakov Antebi, lobbyist and chief Rabbi Damascus, in the time of the blood libel in 1840. The synagogue was known by several names. One was named Kanis el Istambulia, after the member of the congregation of the Turkish origin. Another was Pentit. The tenth synagogue after the 1434 inscription engraved in the ancient silver casting of the Torah scroll stored in the coffer. It was known as Knesset Yecheskel in honor of the philanthropists who financed its restoration. And look at this here, look at the inscription. The Et Beit Akneset Shel Rabbi Rabbi Moshe Al Sheikh. We're standing now where we're going to have the Rega Be'ivrit for this day. This week we are in Parashat Itro. In the Parashat this week we read the story of a man named Itro who was crossing over the land all the way to meet Moshe Rabbeinu, his father-in-law. Now in this Torah portion, the children of Israel received the Torah. And the question becomes, why is it in this Torah portion that the Torah does not call the Torah Ten Commandments, but rather called by the name of Itro. You see, in Hebrew, the word Itro means remnant. The word itself means the remnant. Itro, when he crossed over, changed. His name was changed. And notice at the beginning of the story, he called Kohen Midian. But then his name changed and he became the father-in-law of Moses. In some way, he went from being connected to Midian, son of Midian, to become a son of Israel. What an amazing story we have in this portion. So why is the Torah portion? He's called by the name of Itro and not in the Ten Commandments. The al sheikh actually, in his commentary, explained to us that the greatness of Itro was in the fact that he brought Tzipporah back to Moshe. You see, Moses was divorced from Tzipporah. He sent it out. In Hebrew, we call it a get, meaning he left his wife. The geula and the redemption could not have taken place until Moses is reconciled with his very own wife. His wife's name is Tzipporah. Now, in rabbinic literature, in Hasidic literature, and in the Zohar, the place where Mashiach dwell, called Ken HaTzipor, the bird nest. The word Tzipor in Hebrew, flipping the letter, have the name Poretz or Peretz. Like it says in the book of Ruth, chapter 4, when we read the lineage of David the Melech, that he was birthed out of Peretz. In the book of Genesis, chapter 38, verse 29, we read about the birth of Peret. He said, who are you, Peret, that you come out? He being rebuked, just like Yeshua has been rebuked. What are you to expect? 
expand this version. So you see, Zipporah, reconciliation with Moses, representing the reconciliation of the Zippor, or the Poretz, the Mashiach, with Moshe representing the Jewish people. This is the reconciliation between Israel and Mashiach. And who is the one that is responsible for bringing the reconciliation? The one who crossed over the wilderness. It is, it is Yitro himself, the remnant. If you want to be part of the remnant, People ask me all the time the question, how much Torah should I do if I'm not Jew? How little, how much, how high, how low? The question is irrelevant. The question rather you have to ask yourself is, am I part of reconciliation? That friend is the question that Al Sheikh explained to us that we must ask. The job of the nations today is to be part of the reconciliation of bringing Mashiach to the tent of Moshe Rabbeinu. Now think about this. Over the years, we received many tziporas. We received the tziporah of the Catholics. We received the tziporah of the Inquisition. We received the tziporah of the Third Reich. We received the tziporah of the Crusade. Wow, wow, so many tziporas we received. But Moses could not accept this tziporah. Just as today, Jews cannot accept Jesus, that the one that cannot come into the tent of Moshe Rabbeinu. Our job today, more than ever, is to cross over. Go as far as you can and as long as you can in order to bring that Zippor, the Poretz, the Mashiach, back to the tent of Moses. And then, and only then, the Geula will come to the world. So who is the great among the nations? Those who are carrying Mashiach on their back, back home to Judaism, to Israel, and to the Torah. Thank you, Rabbi al Sheikh, for this delightful word that we learn. We're walking in this synagogue of the al Sheikh today. And I pray today that all of you will come on in to the tent of Moses, to the synagogue of the Al Sheikh, to the synagogue of Yosef Karo, wherever it is, and bring the spirit of Mashiach alongside with you. This friend is the special Regabi Ivrit Al Sheikh edition from the city of Tzfat. Shalom. <laughs>